Well, for all those that uh, have not met Bren yet, those folks that perhaps are not from the Hillside Local Church, it's my wife. Yeah. Isn't she pretty? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Brent and I have had a lot on our heart, there's been a lot going on, so we thought we'd just come and chat with you about some of the things that have been unfolding in our lives, some of the things that we've experienced, some of the things that have really blessed our heart. And uh, This includes some dreams that we've had, some passages of scripture that we've read, and things that we've just really connected with in our spirit. And so, uh, yeah. yeah, hello to everybody, Brent. Hello everyone. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to start off by sharing something that I believe the Lord gave me. It was the middle of February. I remember it was very close to Valentine's Day. And uh, we were having our pre-meeting, our weekly pre-meeting, and I was sitting on the edge of the stage. And um, I was in a time of prayer, and I remember having a big Bible in front of me, and I was just really enjoying Jesus. And then I had, I heard something. Um, it, was, it was an auditory experience mm-hmm. that I had. I heard what sounded like a, a shofar. I could hear it almost like from a distance. And um, you know, I heard. I remember distinctively hearing it with the right ear. And I still looked as if like, where is that? And then I, I closed my eyes, and because I knew the Lord's, you know, busy. He's busy trying to say something here. And all I could hear was the sound of the shofar, and I I could see the sound was resonating from the top of like a a hill, a mountain. It was sort of this kind of shape, a V-shape, and um, I just heard every now and then this this call of it like a shofar. It was beautiful. I heard it the whole time. Even when I was walking out of the auditorium, there was this, this constant sound of a shofar. And then I also heard after that, it's like the shofar sound stopped. And then it, I heard what sounded like drums. It was like a, a rumbling, but it was coming from the back. So there was the shofar sound in the front, and from the background, this the drums. It was like getting louder and louder, but it was like a, a victory drum, victory sound, you know. It was just it was beautiful. So it was this whole, this whole thing of the... Something is about to be announced, or something is about to to happen, you know. And yeah, and then I just shared afterwards, you know, what I heard because I didn't really know, you know, I've heard the sound of a shofar, but I've I never really knew what the meaning of it is. Uh, but that was that was definite uh, sound that I heard. Yeah. And of course, with all the things that. Uh uh, I've been sharing, uh, you know, lately for those that don't know, I, I want to encourage you. Uh, we've been sharing about dreams and prophecy and vision and what they mean, what they don't mean. And God has really been impacting our family lately with dreams and taking us straight to the Word of God and how He's been so faithful in unfolding the meaning of those dreams for us as well. It's just been, you know, our faith has always been real for us. It has always been beautiful for us. But it's like we've entered into a new dimension of the reality of what we believe. And as we see the things that are written in Scripture just bearing down on us and being so close and something that we can just really, it's almost like you can reach out and touch it. It's not that far away anymore. And um, I remember just before the coronavirus came, I shared with Brian, I had a dream of, of waters rising and high waters rising. And there were people in a building and uh, I was just trying to pull these people out. It's like there was a long line and each one holding the next one. And I was trying to pull people out. And the building was opulent, but it was being flooded. It was being, you know, as the water was coming out. And there was just a sense of urgency of people pulling the people out of the water. And that was just before the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some other details about that as well. But, but what really uh, impacted me was a little while later, I had a dream that I was with somebody... Uh, visiting somebody. Now, now, if you've not yet heard my latest message about uh, angels appearing in dreams, uh, you need to go and listen to this latest one of mine. That's Behold the Vision, Part 3. But I was with somebody in the stream, just having casual conversation and talking with this person, almost as if I was outside of their home on a porch, just talking to them. And the next thing, there was a rumbling. There was a shaking that took place. And I looked up, 
And in the not too distant future, uh, uh, in the not too far distance from us, there was a, a volcano that was starting to erupt. And this was odd for me because, I mean, we live in South Africa. Volcanoes just don't feature in this part of the world. And it's not like I've been watching any movies with volcanoes. There was nothing to impact me about volcanoes. It was almost out of the blue. And this, this volcano, as it erupted, uh, it was spewing big bits of, of lava that would just come splatting down to the earth. And I remember uh, trying to get into my car and drive away from this because I thought I needed to go and warn some people about this volcano. But after uh, I was driving, as fast as I was driving, there was just this thick, very high wall of lava that was just flowing behind me. And, uh, you know, what was striking was if I wanted to turn in one direction in the car, the lava just came and flowed over that direction. And then I wanted to go in another direction, then the lava came and flowed over that path, so I couldn't go that way. It's almost as if the lava was steering me in a certain direction. And while I was driving, I remember seeing some people trying to pack their cars and get up and get ready to leave as well. Well, there's a couple of other details in that dream too, but can I tell you the one significant difference between a flood of water and a flood of lava is when the water has risen, the water will recede again and generally the landscape will go back to what it was like. But when lava comes, the landscape will be changed forever. There's a change that is happening. Now, uh, you know, in this last uh, message of mine, Behold the Vision, uh, part three, uh, I spoke about after God giving you a dream, uh, He will always send a visitor, somebody that will come and lead you to a part of the meaning of your dream, either the entire meaning or a part thereof, you know. And God spent, sent a very special little visitor my way just to come and confirm the dream that I've been having, and, I, and, and we'll join in with that in just a little while, you know. But uh, Bryn, there was also scripture that the Lord been speaking to us as well from the Bible. There were certain passages mm -hmm. uh, of the Bible. If you can just hold that, I'm going to get one of the passages. But yeah, I don't know if you're going to point to Isaiah 60, um, but I, I love singing. I love praising and worshiping Jesus. And um, the one morning, I remember waking up with a song in my head. Arise and shine, for your light has come. It's time to lift the name of Jesus higher. <laughs> I just, I remember just, there was just such a, a warmth uh, in my heart and an excitement. And I kept seeing this, kept seeing this. And I even um, sent a, a WhatsApp message to one of my, my friends. And I sang this for her. And because um, I just wanted to encourage her and bless her. And, uh, yeah, what does the scripture say? <laughs> okay, well, I mean, you, you read it for us. <laughs> okay. Just, just the first. From, yes, Isaiah 60, the future glory of Israel. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the, to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, they all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill, and exalt because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Amen. 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 Well, one one of the uh, uh, features of the dream that I had was the fact of you know uh, uh, people having to leave, yes. people packing. You know, there's a sense of get up and, and go and leave. Yes. And uh, you know, when you talk here about you know the abundance coming to you and people, I see an almost an international type connection. Yeah. that is happening. This is not a localized thing. Yeah. It's something that is happening on a global level and that's very powerful. Well, for me, one of the scriptures that has really been resonating uh, in my mind uh, since that dream that I had, I was taken straight to Isaiah 64. I remember the volcano 
Remember the concept of uh, what is a volcano? That's a mountain that shattle, uh, uh, that, that is shattered. That is a mountain that 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 that, that explodes almost. Uh, listen to Isaiah chapter sixty four. It says. Uh, the, uh, the prophet says to God, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. Listen to it. As when fire kindles rushwood. That's talking about a shaking mountain that is on fire. Brothers and sisters, that's a volcano. That's a volcano. And, and, and the prayer here is, Oh, that God would come. This is, this is the cry of the prophet saying, Lord, your people, we desire you, we're thirsty for you, we want you. Oh, that you would come to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations, the nations might tremble at your presence. This is a heart's cry. You know, just a little while ago, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Brent and I were sitting and we were talking about the rapture of, of the church and the second coming of Christ. And what a delightful, it's almost as if we're homesick for our Jesus to come. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? No, no, it's going to be so beautiful. I said to Warren, I can imagine hearing the trumpet call. I would run outside. I would be so ready <laughs> to sort of go and be with Jesus and to be taken away from all of this happening here on the earth and just to be to be saved. Well, we need a rescuer. We, we need you a know, rescuer. And man is not time. you know, man is not going to do it. We need a we need a savior. And yeah. and praise God, Jesus has never stopped being a savior. You yeah. know, yeah. come and rescue. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I think what really spoke to me, something very profound that you said to me that I really wasn't aware of, was uh, when you said that um, all the prophecies in the Word of God has been fulfilled. Fulfilled, absolutely. I yeah. mean, that's quite a thought. So Jesus can actually come at any time. Yeah. That's quite an exciting thought. So with all this happening this year, over the past few months, there's just this sense of, you know what, get ready. Get ready, get your life in order, and um, just just be ready for the coming of Jesus. We Amen. don't know when it's going to happen. Amen. You know, Amen. we don't know when it's going to happen, but we're just being obedient yes. in sharing what the Lord has laid on our heart, and um, He's just brought it in, you know, different ways, and it's it's like coming quicker and quicker, and the confirmation is getting more and more. So, okay. Well, well, we're going to get back together with you in just a moment. But what I want to do is, you know, I was speaking about God will send a visitor to come and give you clarity on your dream. Now, this dream of a volcano that I had, and then there was the lava that had come afterwards. Uh, God sent a very special little visitor my way. And, uh, you know, it was in the form of my son, Regan. And he had also had a dream. Now, I'm going to get Regan to come and to tell you the dream that he had. And I want you to bear in mind that I had not mentioned this dream to my son. Uh, myself and Bren had spoken about it. I would not mentioned my dream to him at all. I didn't give him any details. I didn't speak a word to him about this. But actually, it was just this morning, Regan woke up and he said to me, Dad, I had a dream. Now, Regan's nine years old, and some of the contents of this dream is a little bit too... Uh, uh, advanced, I think, for the thinking process of a nine-year-old man. When I was nine years old, I was still thinking about Lone Ranger and yeah. he man. So, so, he man. Superman. Yeah. So now listen, I, I just want to introduce you to my son Regan. We're going to take a moment, then Brennan and I'll get back with you in just a moment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hey everybody! Hey everybody! I'm Regan! I'm Regan! Come on, Regan, greet everybody. Just tune Hey! Say what's up, guys! What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, guys. <laughs> Thanks for that. Listen, okay. now, Reed, the reason, the reason why I want us to make a little video for some facts is because you had an interesting dream last night, and I thought it was fantastic. Why don't you, why don't you just try and remember a little bit about what the dream was and some details there for us? Can you, can you remember for us? I can do it, but, but why, Dad? But why? Because I just think we should make a little recording of it, you see? Because it's very interesting. Okay. Okay? So, what was the dream all about? Okay. My dream was about that, that there was a big fire hitting for Africa, and it all started off in Madagascar. Okay, but just start off quickly with me and say, where did the fire come from? 
It, it all started off in Madagascar. Yes, but what made the fire? A volcano. So a big boulder fell into the volcano and then there was a strange, strange thing happening. Then the volcano broke and all the lava fell out and then it was heading straight to Africa. All the lava, you say? Yes, and okay. then the lava... And then when the lava reached Africa, then the then the lava turned into fire. Okay. And then tell us a little bit more. Well, the fire was spreading all over Africa. And then all of the people in Africa, especially the ones in, in the East Africa and the North Africa and the West Africa had to leave Africa. Some people had to go by plane to another shape to another safe country and some people had to go by ship to another safe country and they all had to split up. Some African people went to North America, some African people went to South America, some people went to Asia and some of the African people went to Europe and some of the African people went to Australia and and they can and they could only return once the fire was over. So they did come back? Yes. So when the fire was over, all you could see was everything was so dirty and crops were, were all burnt. But that changed because then the African people called some more helpers from, from the other countries to help the African people rebuild their city and everything was beautiful again and farmers could and the farmers took all of those burned crops and then grew, and then they have grown brand new crops and everything was safe and happy again. Ah, oh, so the end of your dream was, was good. The end of your dream was everybody was safe and happy. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh-huh. Hey dude you rock. You really, thank you for sharing with us, man. You really shared it so nicely. Thank you. Can I have a fist bump? Uh -huh. How about a hug? Go and give your old dad a kiss on my cheek, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> wow. Wow. What confirmation from a little guy. Mm -hmm. I, I had not mentioned one of the details of my dream to him but he came and he gave some extra details to me yeah. the concept of uh, the volcano the concept of the lava that had come yeah. the con now get this the concept of people having to leave the concept of people having to leave africa and go to other places but but then after that there was the renewal there was the coming back and then having assistance from outside to come and make everything new. Though it was full of ash, they came and made it beautiful again. What are your first impressions when you hear a dream like that? Let's put it into the context of the conversation that you and I just had about the rapture. Well, you know, when somebody comes like this, I mean, the Lord used our son. And um, so just that alone is so special because it's, you know, in our family unit. First, you said something to me, and then said something to you, and I said something to you again. Yeah. And it ties up so beautifully. I mean, it's so specific. Volcano, the, the, the fire, and, and like you mentioned now, you know, about going away and the returning and all of this. It's clearly a, a beautiful picture, I think, of the end times. And um, this is why we feel it's so important to share it with you. Um, yeah. You know, we actually have a sense of urgency to share this. Now, yeah. look, uh, uh, we're not at a, at a stage yet where we can say to you, this is it, this is the end time. Yeah. But, but what we're saying is we believe that there's a sense of urgency on the Church of Christ. And we believe that the coming of our Lord is so close. And look, even if it comes in the next hundred years, that's close. <laughs> you know? yeah. but, but I don't know. I just, you know, as we see things lining up, we don't have the full meaning of this dream. Perhaps this dream could mean something different to you. But we're just saying that we feel in our hearts that Jesus is preparing his church. And when we speak about going away, do you know in the, in the book of Revelation, uh, in the book of Ezekiel, in the, in, the, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Daniel, when it speaks about the end times, part of that is it teaches about the rapture. 
that it says that the earth will be destroyed with fire. Now, isn't it amazing that the first time the world was destroyed was with water? Yeah, wow. The second time was with fire. Yeah. With my dreams that I had, the first very prominent dream in my heart was about water. The second one was about fire. And, and I just believe that we're going into a time where, where, where God is saying, man, wake up, wake up. There's a, there's a time. But for us, it's a sense of great joy because our Messiah is coming, our Lord. Oh, we can't wait. Yeah. Uh, it's like we've got the sense of just being homesick. Yeah. But we just want to bless you. And, yeah. and we just want to bless the church of Christ. I, I believe that we're in a phase, look, it's out of your hands now. We're, we're too far along in the prophetic calendar. The clock is it's out of your hands. Live your life close to Jesus. Yes. Be a testimony. Don't run around trying to be frantic. Don't run around like a chicken without a head. Just live your life with Jesus. Yes. Be a testimony to the people around you. Yes. Pray for your family members that God will soften their hearts. Those hard hearts, pray for them. Because there's going to come a time where the door gets closed. And those that are in are in and those that are out are out. Mm -hmm. Now our blessed hope is that our Lord is going to come and save us. And then the, the Bible says that then the earth will be destroyed by fire. And listen, and the landscape will be changed forever. Just like lava, the landscape will be changed forever. Yes. And, and we know that there's going to be all sorts of hell breaking loose on the earth in those days but we that are with Christ in heaven we're going to be celebrating with him for seven years yeah. for seven years during the yeah. during the the three and a half years of tribulation and the three and a half years of great tribulation I'm not going to go into all that detail but here's the point here's the point our Messiah is going to come and take us away yeah. for the period of the fire yeah. and then after the fire is finished our Messiah is going to bring us back there's going to be a great returning and praise God for that time, because then the government is going to be upon his shoulders. Oh, Can you imagine living in a society with no crime? Oh, Can you imagine with no corruption? Can you imagine yes. with no uh, uh, rioting and yes. violence? And can you imagine how beautiful yes. it's going to be? It's precious, precious, precious. And you know, just like that, okay? twinkling over now. Okay? Yeah, twinkling over now. And just what a moment that will be. I mean, you live for that day. Like, like you say, it's, you get uh, homesick yes. for, that, for that day. Yes. Like, what an awesome day. That's it's very awesome. beautiful. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Yeah, really. Well, look, um, like, like I say, this is, this is, this is not a uh, cause panic word. This is a word of comfort. The Lord says, comfort, comfort my people. And never take your eyes off of Jesus. I mean, sometimes you can be so overwhelmed by the things going on in this world by the news reports, but keep your eyes on your coming King, His coming. Mm -hmm. and, and let Him be your blessed hope. Rest in Him. Let your peace be in Him. Uh, and be ready. Prepare for Him. Mm -hmm. You know, I think of that parable in the Bible about the ten maidens uh, that were prepared. Five were prepared and five were not. And let us be of those that are prepared mm -hmm. for our coming Lord Jesus. Draw closer to Him than ever before. Mm -hmm. Pay particular attention to the dreams that God sends your way yeah. and don't keep them to yourself yeah. get with somebody get with a pastor get with some, one of your leaders in your church I, I know sometimes movements are restricted right now but let, get with somebody you could be somebody's visitor and they could be your visitor for the interpretation of those dreams God is moving in supernatural ways right now yeah. and we just yet to encourage you we to yeah. I want to uplift you uh, keep walking with Jesus amen yeah. Let us pray for you before we let you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Heavenly Father, we love you. Uh, you. You are so dear and so precious for us. And God, I just want to bring your people to you. I want to bring your church to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, we know that there's so much going on in this world right now. But, but you're the God of love and your church is the beacon of love and hope. Mm -hmm. And I want to pray, Lord God, that the fragrance of Christ will spread more rapidly throughout this world, throughout your uh, church throughout your children's hearts God yeah. Lord that yeah, your coming will be a sense not of horror or despair or fear but of great hope yeah. that uh, all over the world we're going to see children of God lifting their heads for their redemption draws near mm -hmm. Lord I, I want to say a special prayer perhaps for somebody that is watching this that doesn't know you mm -hmm. somebody that's watching this 
that is shaken to the core because for the first time the truth of the gospel is reaching them. Oh God, by your spirit, would you just touch their spirit? If, if you're not in relationship with Jesus, what can I say? What can I say? He's not coming to fetch you if you're not in relationship with him. But, but that can change just by softening your heart and just by directing your, your thoughts and your heart to him and by surrendering to him and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Would you just pray this prayer after me? Oh, Lord Jesus, I, uh, I've rejected you for so long. I've mocked you. I, I may even have blasphemed you. I, I've not accepted you, but I am on my knees right now. I confess that you are the Lord. When I see how your prophecies are unfolding in the world around us, I confess that you are Lord. I confess to everything that I now read in the Bible, that I now accept as true. I will pick up your word and read the Bible like never before and accept the truths of that Bible. I will accept you as my Lord and Savior and I will accept that you were crucified but on the third day rose back to life again and are raised forevermore. Lord Jesus, would you make me one of the number that you would fetch when you come again to earth. Uh, Ray, would you just pray with the people as well? Yes, hallelujah. Father God, this is not a time to be fearful, Lord, but a time to get ready, Father God. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you prepare the hearts of your people, Lord, that you would speak to them in a gentle, quiet voice, Lord, and that they will just know that they know that they know when my Jesus comes, I'm going to go be with my Jesus. I'm going to go and be with him. And I just pray, Father God, that, that you would do a special work, a special work in your people, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Amen. Well, may God bless and keep you. We love you. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, our email address is hillside pmb at gmail.com doesn't matter where in the world you are we love you we're brothers and sisters in christ now mm -hmm. and we'd love to hear from you and get in touch with you in the meantime may you be shielded under the shadow of his wing and know what it means to be called a child of the most high god mm -hmm. god bless you Amen.